Yo, I'm Gunnar and I'm developing a game in solo. And this month, well, you got me in a bit of a tricky spot. Currently, I'm working on refining the combat system. Even though I've added and modified many features under the hood, visually it might seem a bit underwhelming or even like a regression. Let me guide you through it in more detail. The most obvious thing I've worked on is integrating the third form of the spirit. After the fist and wings, the third form will feature a long tail. Disclaimer, what you see here is a placeholder and not the final design. Since the arms attach to the spirit's shoulder and the wings to its back, I thought the ideal place for the third form to attach would be the waist. A long tail also means a large attack radius and feels radically different from the fist and wings, giving it a unique moveset. Right now I'm imagining attacks using the tail like a whip capable of reaching distant targets and even wrapping around and grabbing for throw. The current design is quite blocky, essentially just a tapered tube attached to the spirit, but for the final look, I envision it as a tail of a long Asian style dragon or even a reptile. The lens is key to highlight the form's range usage. I chose to start implementing the gameplay for this form before even having a final design, because to be honest, I wasn't 100% convinced of the idea initially. My main concern was the feasibility of animating something so complex especially when it comes to grabbing distant targets. I couldn't just create a standard grab animation. What happens if the target is 2 meters away from the spirit, or 10 meters, or not perfectly aligned with the spirit? To make it work, I had to find a way to adjust the direction of the tail's bones during runtime to ensure they always point towards the target. I used Control Rig for this, and it was surprisingly straightforward. By setting up a spline IK rig, I can adjust the animation in real time to ensure the tail's tip always hits the target. I can even do cool stuff like a wiggle effect. It's not true physics, but it's done directly within the control rig, so it's less accurate, but also less costly and more stable. Now, I'm thinking about playing this in some other places to add secondary movement to other characters without destroying performance. This month, I've also added a new mechanic to my combat system. I call it Poise. It's represented by a bar above the health bar, which depletes each time an enemy takes hits, but gradually refills over time. When this bar is completely empty, the character enters a Poise Break state for about 10 seconds, and all attacks are interrupted by any hits. When an enemy is in a poise break state, every hit interrupts them, making it much easier to unleash handless combos without fear of retaliation. My goal with this mechanic is to encourage players to adapt their strategies based on the enemy state. Some attacks will be particularly effective in reducing the poise gauge, while others will truly shine when the target is in a poise break state. The poise break state ends after a few seconds, but it can be maintained beyond that as long as the combo is ongoing. This encourages and rewards players to master advanced, complex combo chains to maximize the duration of the poise break. Speaking of combos, I've come up with some interesting effects to add to the spirit's attacks. For example, the fist can knock an enemy back towards the main character, allowing the player to play a kind of ping pong game with the target. The wings can create a growing circle of wind around the spirits, pushing all the enemies out and forming a barrier. The spirit can also flap its wings to generate gusts of wind that line up enemies. This is useful when the main character uses attacks with a line area effect. As for the tails, it can grab an enemy and put them towards the main character. Of course, everything you're seeing right now is still very much placeholder and visually not very satisfying. It's missing all the elements that enhance the game's feel, such as VFX, freeze frames, sound effects, impact animation, etc. For now, I want to focus first on the gameplay mechanics, make sure I'm heading in the right direction, find what works, discard what doesn't, and get a good sense of what I need before spending time on the eye candy. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed this recap, I realize it might not be the most exciting recap to watch, since I'm mostly showing half implementing and still broken features. Nevertheless, I'm pleased with the progress made. 
things are taking shape and the combat system's identity is starting to be more obvious. If you'd like to support this project and haven't yet subscribed to this channel, why not do it now? And don't forget to check out the Steam page of Silkworld Project and wishlist the game. The link is in the description. Thanks again for your support, have a great October and I'll see you next month.